Being fast in AutoCAD isn't all about memorizing commands and knowing more than the next person. It's more about building systems, templates, and repetitive standards that you can use to improve the quality and speed of your drawings during production. In today's video, I'm going to share seven of my favorite habits and workflows that are guaranteed to speed up your drawing production and increase consistency within them. Let's jump right into today's video. All right, so starting off, we're gonna go with a basic one that everybody should already be using, but if you're not, you need to be using XREFs or external references within AutoCAD. So you can see this basic floor plan example that I use a lot because it kind of touches on a lot of different things within AutoCAD. But the one main one is an XREF. An external reference is another drawing that you're referencing into your current working drawing. This can be updated separately from the drawing you're working on, and those updates will sync or load into your design drawing or production drawing. This allows you to reuse something like the walls of this floor plan in multiple plans while being able to change them once in one place and have that automatically update in every other drawing set. So if you've got a drawing dedicated to electrical, like say this one here that's showing the lights and outlet locations, and you've got another plan maybe showing HVAC or plumbing or furniture or even cabinetry and uh, fixtures. Any of those things can be in separate drawings, and as long as you reference in the same wall drawing, they're all going to have the same reference point, size, and wall dimensions. Now, if you were to go into that XREF and edit it, so if we right click on the XREF, open it, and then change something like with the location or length of this wall here, let's extend it out. We can extend these so they connect again and now we're simply going to save that drawing. Now when we go back into our floor plan, we're going to get alerted that that XREF has changed and by clicking on it, it's going to reload it. It'll even compare and contrast the differences. So you can see the red of the original and you can see the circled in yellow here changes that happen to the drawing. Hitting that X is going to exit it out and you can see now the walls have been updated based on our changes. This is going to save you a ton of time no matter what type of drawings or discipline you're working in within AutoCAD or even Civil 3D. Making sure you've separated drawings out properly into different XREFs that can then be shared on a project uh, basis is going to save you a ton of time and making changes a lot more seamless. If you'd like to learn more about XREFs, make sure you check out my course, which I'll mention again later along with some more information or the other videos on my channel where we dive deeper into XREFs. But moving along to number two, we're going to look at fields within AutoCAD. Another great way to be more productive as well as set yourself up for success and less errors within your drawings. So if we flip over to a layout tab here, you can see I've got a field set up already. Fields are a way to automate and dynamically link text to other parts of your drawing, whether that's an object or another piece of text or a field. Uh, these fields are going to automatically update when something else changes. In this case, I've got it linked to the scale of the viewport over here. So if I select this viewport, you can see in the bottom right here, it is at a scale of 1 to 100, and that is being pulled into this scale text here. Now to add a new field, you can simply click insert field when within an attribute or text object. And I'm going to demo that here, but as I mentioned before, you can also look up the other videos on my channel to dive into these. I'm just explaining the best workflows and productivity tips that you're going to need to know to really excel in AutoCAD. So for our example here, we're going to use this tab text here to pull the drawing title from. Uh, you could also use this for, say, a drawing number or another variety of reasons. But in our case, we're going to pull this text into this title. So we're going to double click our multi text or M text here, select the text that's already there and delete it. We don't need it. We're going to right click and choose import or insert field. Control and F is also the short command for that. Now, these are all of the different properties and field names that you can use and pull from within AutoCAD. Each category is going to have a variety of different options. For us, we want the other category and we're going to use system variables. These are things within the drawing that you can pull information from and insert into your drawing. 
Now the one I need for the tab is called C tab. So I'm just going to type in C and T and you can see here it is going to pull the tab text into our piece of text. Over on the right here, you can change up the format for these, which is super useful. In most cases for titles, you're going to want uppercase. So regardless if you have uppercase in the layout tab name, it's going to convert it to uppercase for your field. You can see here that it is now called elect plan. I can now exit out of that multi-text. And now anytime this updates, so we're going to change it here. We're going to call it updated text because I've changed it and hit enter. You'll notice it won't update automatically. Fields in AutoCAD only update when you save or regen a drawing. So if I hit control and then S to save a drawing or I type in regen and hit enter, that text is going to update throughout the entire drawing. You can have as many of these as you want doing a ton of different things. Some examples include you can pull areas from objects, you can pull scales from viewports, text from the layouts, or text from drawing properties or sheet sets, which is a huge time saver in AutoCAD. Sheet sets allow you to basically create an index sheet of your whole drawing package. This list can include drawings from multiple different files. As many DWGs as you'd like to add drawings to your sheet set, you can. And then from that sheet set, you can control things like fields for each drawing. Titles, numbers, revisions, dates, and more can all be updated from somewhere called the Sheet Set Manager. And that's going to propagate and dynamically update all of the linked drawings. If you'd like to learn more about sheet sets, I highly recommend checking out my AutoCAD Fundamentals and Workflows course. And right now you can get the complete CAD toolbox package, which includes the templates we're going to look at today, as well as my sheet sets course, as well as my fundamentals and workflows course and the AutoCAD Kickstarter course, all included in the bundle, which you can get right now and learn everything from drawing and title block and template creation all the way through to drawing creation, XRefs, sheet sets, title blocks, and more, as well as plotting and packaging your drawings to send them to clients. All of this is included in that package, which you can get at the link up above and down below in the description. That leads nicely into my next point, number three here, to speed up your AutoCAD drawing production. And that is to start every drawing from a template. If you don't already have a template, I highly recommend creating one. You can learn that in the course or in some of my other videos. But the benefits of having a template is that every new drawing you start, so we're going to create a new drawing here, and we're going to choose one of my templates. So depending on which template you've set up or what you'd like, you're going to get different things. I like to set up my title block as well as my layouts in different sheet sizes so that I already have those set up and ready to go. Each one will have a viewport, it'll have text, it'll have different sheet sizes that I can go from. You can even pre-insert all of your typical and custom blocks that you use day to day within your drawings into your template before you create it. Then when you open up your drawing, you've already got your layout tabs, your title blocks, your blocks. You can even have all of your layers preset and inserted along with line types, colors, and settings, all included in that .dwt. So starting every drawing from a DWT that you've created for your own projects and drawings is a must. If you don't already have that, I highly, highly recommend setting that up. That alone will save you more time than this video in the first project. Now we've still got a few more tips to go and the last one might be my favorite quick tip that I've done in any of my videos. I have mentioned it before and I'm excited to share it again. But before we get to that, number four is to use better hardware. If you're still using a basic or stock mouse or keyboard, upgrading to a CAD or at least a multi-button setup with customizable options is going to be a huge game changer. Uh, I still like the 3D connection CAD mouse pro the wireless version or the smaller wireless version are my go-to's uh, I use these every day for pretty much everything I do but especially for anything CAD specific they'll speed up your commands they've got custom macros as well as the radial menu with custom built-in AutoCAD commands and depending on which software you're using those commands will automatically switch to match the software you're in you can check them out. I've made videos before, but I highly recommend upgrading your hardware in some way. 
uh, whether that's just a more comfortable mouse or one with more options, all of this is going to improve productivity as well as longevity in the career. Uh, carpal tunnel and just people getting uncomfortable with their workstations happens all the time and having the gear that suits you is best. Next up, or number five, is to use drawing checklists on your projects. Now, these can be specific to the discipline or even the type of project you're doing, but having checks and balances as you do your design work is a huge game changer. Having things like a checklist to ensure that you've got your north arrow and scale bar and title block filled out and that the scale has been updated. Uh, also things that include back checks on using the correct base data or base survey. All of these things can be added to your workflow checklist, including doing a test plot, which is the kind of sixth tip here, and that is test plotting your drawings as you work on them. It can be difficult to understand just how something is going to plot and look. So if we type in plot here and preview our drawing, you never know what the drawing is going to look like. You can see here that all of these colors are plotting because we don't have a plot style set. But if you're test plotting, you're going to be able to understand and really visualize how these drawings are going to look when produced, and it'll help you catch any issues or errors. Things like overlapping texts or objects aren't always as easy to notice or visible when you're looking at it in model space and within AutoCAD. Doing a test plot to PDF is a huge deal and it allows you to kind of get an idea and a sense of how drawings are going to look when printed as you progress through your career. By the time you're a veteran and have done this a thousand times, you don't need to do as many test plots because you can just visualize and picture how things are going to print and interact with each other. But I still find myself catching little things when I do those test plots. I always review and go over my plots before I send them off to a project manager or a client just in case I miss any of those things within the model space. It's a great way to just check it out and make sure all of your colors and line weights and styles, everything plotted properly and looks the way it should. Now for number seven here and probably my favorite productivity tip within AutoCAD is creating a custom tool palette depending on the type of work you're doing. So if you don't already know, palettes are kind of these flyouts within AutoCAD. You can open up the main one by holding control and tapping the number three. This is gonna open up your tool palettes and each one is going to have different options depending on the version of AutoCAD you've got and which add-ons you may have installed, or if you're using Civil 3D, similarly, depending on what you're doing, the tool palettes are going to change and be contextual to some extent. But if you'd like to create a custom one that is just for you, all you need to do is right click on one of the tabs and say new palette. You can give it a name, this will be our example, and now it's in this list. This is going to be saved within your file and within your AutoCAD. So you can use these, they are super useful. You can simply drag and drop objects you'd like to add to it. You can add anything from typical blocks you're using to text pieces, to line types and more. So if you've got a dimension style or a piece of text or a typical block that you like to use and you'd like to use that in pretty much every drawing, creating a new tool palette just for that style of drawing, say architectural drawings or civil drawings or mechanical drawings, you can simply drag and drop these objects into your tool palette and now you're going to have a button to create a new one of each of these whenever you want. So I can simply drag and drop these. I'm gonna drag this text. This is my typical note text. It's gonna go in there. You can give them names. You can change the settings by simply right clicking on them and going to properties. You can adjust some of these settings like scale and color and line type and layer, all of that so that they are custom set up to what you like to use. And then when you want to create something, simply click on it, add it to your drawing. And I've got example notes instantly having them set to the same layer and style as the example that I added to the tool palette. So I hope these tips have helped in some way. Uh, and if you'd like to learn more about any one in particular, you can leave a comment down below. I also highly recommend searching my channel page for previous videos. I've gone in depth on pretty much all of these as well as check out the AutoCAD Fundamentals and Workflows course. That complete package is available right now where you'll learn all of these and a ton, ton more. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, I'd really love it if you took a second and hit that subscribe button if you're still watching 
watching. We are so close to 100,000 CAD Intention subscribers, something that I never thought would ever happen. Uh, and I've been doing this for over 12 years. I had no idea and no expectation of getting to 100, but it's my birthday. Uh, come January 2nd and it would be really cool if we could hit it. We're at 99,200 or something like that So not too much further to go hit subscribe and I would love to see that number hit 100,000 in the new year. Thanks for watching Have a good one and cheers